You'll see me now and later, laid up in the web I weave. Don't ever question or upset me, I'm your majesty. Bow down, touch the ground, show love when I come around. You say my name out loud, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hey guys, this is Steve with uh, Drywall Industries. Uh, actually, I'll say my full name, Steven Skadibwe, uh, aka Agent Dry, aka uh, the best man on earth, aka the player's choice, aka, you know, everything I'm saying here makes no sense, but we're here with uh, Mr. Roli Bambala. Uh, I'm going to have a few questions, have a little discussion so we get to, you can get to know him a little bit better. Uh, his role with Bombala Strong and uh, his role with uh, as a drywall ambassador. So, Mr. Lombard, how you doing? I'm good. Good. Thanks for having me. Hey, Thanks for having you me. know what? This is <laughs> what all your name. Yes. <laughs> this is what we do. No, right? no, I really so, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Your your name, where you were born. Uh, all right. Now, my name is Rolo Lombala, um, aka Lombala Strong, aka 46. I play fullback for the BC Lions, and I'm one of the um, prestigious athletes, part of the whole dry world industries and uh, um, just a great group of guys and um, they're out there just uh, supporting the, the athletes in all different sports and now uh, it's about to take over. Okay, so you play football. How did you come about football? I mean, uh, where were you born first? Well, I was born in Gabon, Africa, um, but I'm originally from uh, Congo. I'm from Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and uh, my parents found a job in Gabon, Libreville, where I was born, and uh, we stayed there until I was six years old. The situation wasn't very favorable for us in Africa at the time, and Canada was offering us a better future. I'm so thankful that it did that for us. And, and uh, we moved to Canada when I was six years old. Uh, played hockey, baseball, all the sports, and uh, I came from a small town in Montreal. Um, my, my older brother started playing football and uh, he came home one day and he had all this great equipment, uh, you know, all the, the helmets, shoulder pads. And I used to go watch his games and you know, he used to be the fastest guy on the field and right. just you know, like run people over and, and I was kind of like, ah, I think I can kind of do that, you know, I think I'm fast right yeah, at the yeah. time. So um, I kind of got into it like that. Okay. Now the reason why I ask is because in Africa, Gabon, Soccer right. is the national sport, right. yeah. and that's what people like. So, I, did you ever have any interest in other sports other than American football? Because I know you didn't know what American football was. Oh, football. absolutely! Yeah, right. I, so. I had no idea. But you know, at the time, you know, you moved to Montreal in the winter time. All your friends are going to the rink, mm -hmm. right? So you're trying to belong, trying to be a new kid on the block, trying right. to make friends, and you just go to the rink and try to learn how to skate. You know, it, it was a slow process, but um, I ended up loving it. You right, know, hockey and. Um, baseball in the summertime and until I fell in love with football okay. and unfortunately you know my, my dad always wanted me to play soccer but yeah I, I was, I know you there's not enough time right, right. so um, right. yeah but I love soccer though mm -hmm. okay what's your team you have a team soccer oh team? for sure uh suit uh Man City that's my team yeah, great pick great yeah, pick yeah, it is great it is pick. a great pick right. <laughs> <laughs> it so is a great pick then you started playing football yep and uh when did you realize that that's what you want to do with that for a career, this is one of, you know, this is... It kind of happened fast, you know, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. It happened so fast, you know, you go to high school, all of a sudden you get uh, college teams, you know, writing you letters, we want to scholarship, uh, you know, whether it's all across Canada and a couple teams in the States, and you're kind of like, whoa, okay, mm -hmm. and you go there and you play three, four years, and all of a sudden you hear rumors that, hey, you know, you might play the next level, you got scouts coming to see you and you're like, oh, okay, and it happens so fast before you know it, you get drafted and boom, you end up in BC, you know? Um, but it's, I mean, it, it happened fast, but having said that, there's a lot of work that was put in. Absolutely. There, so, was, there was a lot of hard work put in. So what drives you, like what pushed you to, to I mean, you know, we did our homework and uh, if we talk to a lot of your peers in the league, mm -hmm. they will say that you are, if not, the best fullback in the league, huh. you know. They, I mean, we, we see interviews. We we saw we saw your coach talk about it, mm -hmm. and uh, you are well respected around the league mm -hmm. uh, just by your attitude and the way you go about life in general. So, what drives you and what makes you want to be the best human being you can be, or the best teammate you want to be? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. The best teammate you can be. Um, but having said that, I think 
exactly as you said, I try to be the best. Right. And that's my biggest fear. I don't want to let my teammates down, my coaches down. I want to outwork anybody. Right? Um, I'm always thinking, you know, even though I'm here, I'm thinking about, oh man, I gotta get a workout in, I gotta get my push ups in. Right. I'm always thinking, how, how can I get better? How can I improve my game? You know, and um, I've had good accolades, but you know, like they say, you're only as good as your last game. Absolutely. Right? So um, you always gotta show up, and that, that's what I love about football. It, it tests you, it tests your manhood on every play, right? right? Cause uh, you can tell when a man has been hit a few times, mm -hmm. right? And if he's gonna keep bringing it. So it's a good um, test of will and of power, but um, I really enjoy the sport. Right. Yeah. That's good, and, and I guess you're a team player. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely, team first. And, and that said, with, you know, I can tell that you like to work with people and a lot of the things you do, you are around people. Uh, you, you stay home in the off season. Mm -hmm. You work with the kids. Gotcha. Uh, and let's talk about your community work a little bit. Yeah. Uh, why do you decide to to stay home during the off season when you could go home, spend time with the family, or you know go on vacation? Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, you stay. You're here with the kids. You, you pick up work, with different schools, yeah. different programs. So why that? What make what made you want to do that? It's all about giving back because when I look at, you know, what allowed me to be where I am today is because I had tremendous people in my life that guided me in the right path. The times that I wanted to skip school, skip class because I want to be with the cool crowd and, you know, hanging out at uh, Wendy's, whatever, you know, and just, uh, you know, uh, instead of going to class, you know, go eat some food or go to the mall. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was people in my life that told me that, you know what, if I stick to the past, stick to the plans, right. some good things are going to happen. And it's just my way of, of paying it forward. I think it's so important that uh, the youth have some people they can look up to or have somebody that they, they can have as a role model. Absolutely. And uh, th somebody that they can hear their story. Because at the end of the day, it wasn't long ago that I was right there in this seat. Absolutely. You know, um, in the same position that, you know, and I wish too that at the time I would have had somebody like a professional athlete come to me. But fortunately I had some people, teachers, that at the time I thought were my enemies. Cause I was like, oh man, get off me a little bit. You always mm -hmm. on my back, on my grades mm -hmm. and being in school. And now funny enough, they ended up being one of my very good friends that I keep uh, in touch till this day. So it's important to give back, man. It's important to give back. and. Um, and at the same time, uh, I love it. I love, the, I love dealing with the youth, and um, you know, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's something that caught me there when you said, you know, your teachers, and and, and, and I do know personally that you keep in touch with one of your high school coaches, mm -hmm. who you, I think you speak to yeah. uh, every day, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he had been going through health problems. Mm. He had cancer, mm -hmm. and he beat it. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about him? Just to tell you what kind of person he is, even when he was dealing with that stuff, he was still, it seemed like he was more worried about me than himself. All right. I was just like, remember, like I'm fine. You go ahead, you know what I'm saying? We'll handle this game. I'll handle my business and this and that, right? Um, and Coach Z has been amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, at a time where um, you didn't have the te technology that we have today where you needed to send your tapes, right? Absolutely. So he mailed out probably over 100 letters to universities for me. It wasn't just the YouTube and just kind of, you know. So you had a big online. part in it. Oh, you had a huge part of my recruiting success, process, yeah. success. Uh, he hosted coaches at the school for me and uh, put me through workouts, countless hours of making sure that I was ready for mm -hmm. the process, get ready for the SATs and all that stuff. Uh, oh yeah, I own the world, mm -hmm. Coach D, absolutely. Coach uh, D, we love you, Coach we D. Love, I remember you too. Oh yeah, man. he's a tremendous warrior. And um, having said that, I'm not even surprised that he beat cancer that's because cool. that's how strong of a man he is and, mm -hmm. and he has a, an amazing daughter and wife as well. Okay. Let, let me backtrack a little bit. What was your first job? My first job? Yeah. Oh man, you're gonna put me on blast like that? <laughs> My first job, I have two funny first jobs though. My first job was at Burger King. Thank you Burger King for giving me the, <laughs> the opportunity, right? Uh, but I also worked at uh, <laughs> Calgary Stampede. I was a- You're a carny. I was a carny, yeah, I was a carny. I worked at the, the basketball game. Where the hoop is, right. so, well, I shouldn't tell you that, yeah. but you know the hoop is kind of rigged a little bit. You, you got to hit the backboard so it can fall down. But I didn't tell you that. Okay. Yeah. Good, so good. yeah, and you know my friends used to come around and 
kind of make fun of me and just, ah, Rolly, what are you doing, Rolly? Ah, make fun of me. Let me shoot for free. And it just bugged me a little bit, but there was a means to that. Right. With the money that, um, that I accumulated for those 10 days, I saved it all. And because one of my biggest weaknesses at the time was people were saying that, you know, you're big and strong, but you need to be faster, especially if you want to go to the next level, right. to college. So what I did was for those 10 days, I saved all the money that I made for the Calgary Stampede. And I bought uh, a program at the gym called Acceleration Program at the Lindsay Park at the time. Lindsay Park. And that was the hardest program I've ever done in my life. But uh, thanks Paid to that, it, it got me ready for my senior year, mm-hmm. and uh, which we ended up uh, winning the provincial championship. So um, yeah, there was a means to that, you know, and it was long hours, again, part of the whole hard work. but. Uh, when you know what the goal is, you don't mind suffering a little bit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So and then it turns you a strong into a strong man, the strong yeah. man that you are. Mm, that's right. And hence <laughs> Lombardo Strong. Hence Lombardo so, Strong. So let's talk about Lombardo yeah. Strong a yeah. little bit now. Absolutely. Um, mind, body, and soul. 25 more. 25 more. Here we go. A couple years ago, a friend of mine, uh, Baron Miles, started uh, Miles of Fitness. He ended up leaving. I kind of took over from there. Not only that, I took over for the kids program that I run, the Lombardo Strong program, but as well as uh, the boot camp classes. Louder! Lombardo Strong! amazing. And then there's the boot camp, and that you get some of that football energy into there. 20, 20 more, let's go! But I treat myself this morning to a, a butt kicking. It's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. And I get to go to work feeling awesome. I can eat whatever I want, not really, but... <laughs> so, Lombardo is your last name, and why did you pick Lombardo Strong as a as a name for it just kind of came uh just kind of interesting you know people were asking me you know you're going to train people how do you want them to be and uh you know obviously i'm not the strongest in the world but i want them to be strong like me i want them to have a perception that it's so important to have the three phases in your body the mind the body and the soul to be all connected with those three phases mm-hmm. which is something that i strongly believe Absolutely. so i i want them to be to be like me, so mm-hmm. Miles Strong. And, and, and I mean, we, we've been to some of your sessions, mm-hmm. and saw some of your sessions, and, and you A little do. bit louder. <laughs> and, and it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you get your point across. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, got to. So yeah, you, yeah. you have to. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you do train a lot on the mental aspect of the whole, you know, it's the huge. whole training. It's huge. A lot of people always want to focus on the body, always want to focus on the big muscle, the big chest, biceps, mm-hmm. right? But if you're not mentally ready, if you're not mentally trained, how can you go into the battle, right? How can you go into the battle? How can you be, when, the, when it's in a tough game, when you're tired, when you're hurt, if you're not strong mentally, how can you keep going? Mm-hmm. And that's why I always have a positive reinforcement of phrase during the workout that they have to remember. Mm-hmm. That keeps them focused and at the same time, it keeps them focused on the phrase and then you kind of forget a little bit about the pain, mm-hmm. right, at the same time. Because so, you got to remember the phrase while you're doing your push-ups, right? You got to be ready for when I'm asking you what the phrase is and say it as loud as you can, things like that. So it's important to be connected with, with the mind because the mind's a computer, right? Mm-hmm. It starts with it. Yeah. You'll see me now and later, laid up in the web I weave. Don't ever question or upset me, I'm your majesty. Bow down, touch the ground, show love when I come around. You say my name out loud, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about.